One of the bigger head scratchers of the Bulls offseason moves, at least to me anyway, was the signing of Goran Dragic. Now, why was it a bit strange for the Bulls to sign Dragic to a vet minimum deal? Well, the Bulls already have an incredibly crowded backcourt with the likes of Lonzo Ball, Zach Levine, Ayodesumu, Alex Caruso, and Kobe White, all guys of who were in the Bulls rotation last season when healthy anyway. These weren't players who were sitting as the 12th man at the end of the bench and only getting minutes in garbage time. So for the Bulls to add a 36-year-old point guard who was without question past his prime, still a serviceable player, but well past his peak years, and a player who really didn't play that much last season after he was traded to the Raptors in the sign-and-trade deal for Kyle Lowry. He only played five games with the Toronto Raptors and then was traded to the Nets where he played just 16 games. Not only that, but the other reason I found it odd is because above anything else, what the Bulls need the most is shooting and rim protection, size in general, which the front office themselves has called out, and Drogic doesn't really solve either of those. Not anymore anyway. Drogic is not the shooter that he used to be based on what we saw last season, and he certainly isn't a rim protector. But what was even more strange was that according to Goran Drogic himself, the Bulls guaranteed him 20 to 25 minutes off the bench behind Lonzo Ball, which of course would mean limited time for some of the other Bulls guards. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about what this potentially means for the Bulls backcourt this upcoming season, and uh, just how realistic is it for someone like Drogic to be getting that many minutes for the Bulls. So what's going on everyone? You're listening to Bulls Central here. Hope you're all doing well. Now I do want to call out that this was actually reported in an interview Drogic did with the Slovenian media Sportal and the article and interview were entirely in Slovenian. So because I cannot read the article myself, I'm basing this information off of what has been translated by Slow Hoops fan and Matej Sport Info of Matej Petek podcast from that article. And according to them, when Drogic was asked about why he chose the Bulls over the Dallas Mavericks, who were another contender to land Drogic in free agency, Drogic said, quote, at the end of the day, they, meaning the Mavs, were not able to guarantee that I will play. They told me that I would rather be on the bench. However, that does not interest me. That's why my signing there was not an option. Matej then added, Drogic also said that the Bulls guaranteed him 20 to 25 minutes off the bench. Now, normally I would question how credible these sources actually are when it comes to translating this correctly, but then you saw the same quote circulated by some Bulls insiders like Casey Johnson. So this does in fact appear to be credible. Now, whether Drogic was in fact guaranteed that by the front office, we'll get into because that's what I find a little bit harder to believe. But here's the thing. If this was in fact true, that the Bulls guaranteed Drogic that he would be in fact get 20 to 25 minutes off the bench per game this upcoming season, it really leads you to believe one of two things. Either one of the Bulls guards is going to get traded, which I'll get into, or it means the Bulls front office is really not confident how much Lonzo is going to be able to play when the season starts. I already made a whole video discussing how the Lonzo Ball situation is actually more concerning than the Bulls are likely letting on, so I won't reiterate that here. But in short, I think Billy Donovan's comments as well as AK's more recent comments in Summer League in really being very vague with the status of Lonzo Ball and only saying that he's progressing and that he's not quite there yet to being completely healed and that his progress hasn't been as fast as they would like and that they hope, they hope, he'll be able to be ready to go by training camp, which is in September. You're talking about a guy who was supposed to be out six to eight weeks from January to now hoping that he'll be ready and able to go by training camp nearly eight months later. Yeah, not good, especially when you saw Bulls insiders writing about how Lonzo Ball still experiences pain whenever he starts ramping up his rehab. Again, this is from a guy who is only 24 years old, not something you want to see as a Bulls fan from a player that young that you just signed to a four-year deal. But anyway, I'm not going to harp on that point because I've talked about it in videos in the past. We've already talked about concerns around him and his long-term health. But look, if Goran Dragic, 36-year-old Goran Dragic, who played all but 21 games last season is getting 20 to 25 minutes off the bench. Where does that leave minutes for guys like Ayo Dusumu, Alex Caruso, and Kobe White? Last season, Lonzo Ball, before he got injured, averaged 34.6 minutes per game. Zach Levine averaged 34.7 minutes per game. So we already know that if both of those guys are healthy, they're going to be getting the bulk of the minutes in the backcourt. Depending on certain rotations and lineups, you're likely looking at anywhere between 15 to 20 minutes 
max 25 minutes of even available time off of the bench at either the one or the two. Now, the reason I bring up Lonzo Ball and the Bulls being unsure of his health as one of two factors for why Drogic will be promised 20 to 25 minutes a game, well, that means it's very possible that Lonzo isn't going to be playing 35 minutes a game like we saw last season, that you're going to see Lonzo on a minutes restriction to start the year or even potentially the whole season. God, I really hope that's not the case. Could it even mean that Lonzo won't be playing in back-to-backs or missing other games to manage his workload? I don't know. I just can't see how it would be possible to guarantee Drogic 20 to 25 minutes when you still have all of your other guards who are too good to be out of the rotation. Io, Alex Caruso, Kobe, can you imagine any of those guys being out of the Bulls rotation because they promised Drogic 20 to 25 minutes? No, like even for Kobe White, as much as Bulls fans like to harp on the guy, he's still too good of a player to be getting DNPs or to be missing out on playing time because of Goran Dragic. It just doesn't make sense. The only thing that you could possibly think of is that the Bulls have to be unsure how much playing time Lonzo will actually be able to achieve this upcoming season. Thus, Dragic will get a good chunk of minutes at the point, while Io, Kobe, and Caruso will rotate between the one and two off of the bench. But the other scenario for why the Bulls would promise Drogic 20 to 25 minutes, which honestly, even with this, I still find it highly unlikely, but that would mean that someone is getting traded, meaning one of the Bulls' backcourt players is getting traded. And because I can't see the Bulls trading Caruso after just signing him to a four-year deal last offseason, I can't see them trading out of Sumu since he was one of Acme's picks, a Chicago native. The fans love him, and he's shown a ton of promise and skill in his rookie season. Great poise and maturity, smart player, confident player that does well under pressure, only 22 with more room to grow. And I still think that side by side, Io is a better all around player than Kobe White, despite the fact that Kobe is a better offensive player and also young with some upside potential. So that leads me to the obvious. You'd have to think that Kobe White is getting traded. And I know all the Kobe fans are gonna be coming at me. You're always talking about trading Kobe. Why do you continue to hate on Kobe White? Look, this isn't about me hating on Kobe. I still think Kobe can be a fine player in this league, but I just don't see how he's not the odd man out in this situation when you look at the roster, especially after the Bulls signed Drogic, and even more so after he was evidently promised all these minutes by the front office as the selling point for why they should sign with him. Unless you think Kobe is just going to ride the bench, be out of the rotation like Matt Thomas did last season and be okay with that, then sure, maybe he doesn't get traded. But no, Kobe White is a much more valuable player than that, especially at his age, and the Bulls are more than likely going to move him, again, assuming this guarantee was in fact made to Drogic and the Bulls actually keep their word on said promise. Now, what will Kobe actually fetch in a trade? Honestly, it's really hard to say. Kobe's trade value isn't as high as some Bulls fans probably would like to think. There doesn't appear to be a ton of interest in Kobe because of his inconsistency as a player. On top of that, any team that does trade for Kobe has to factor in that he's on an expiring contract of his rookie deal and is going to be looking to get paid for an extension. So unless you want him on a one-year rental and then have him walk in free agency, albeit he would be a restricted free agent, then it's not worth trading for Kobe unless you're planning on keeping him beyond his rookie contract. Now, what Kobe does have going for him in terms of his trade value is he's young, only 22. He hasn't entered his prime yet, so there's still upside potential as it relates to improving his shooting even further, improved ball handling and playmaking, Kobe is also a valuable piece for a team that is looking for some scoring because even despite his consistency issues, Kobe did still average 12.7 points per game on 43% shooting and 38% from three on 27 minutes per game. As a sophomore, before the Bulls added Lonzo Caruso and Io, Kobe was getting starting minutes and he averaged 15 points per game. So it's not like he's a scrub as much as some Bulls fans would claim that he is. And he has improved some aspects of his game since entering the league, such as playing off screens a lot better and getting to the basket at a better rate. He's been able to limit his turnovers and improve that assist to turnover ratio. But of course, the downsides, very one dimensional, not at all a good defender, not a great decision maker, especially late in game. So anyway, long winded to say that it's hard to really assess Kobe White's trade value. I do think that Kobe could potentially get you a first round pick, a late first rounder anyway. A team isn't going to trade an unprotected first round pick for Kobe. It would have to be lottery protected. Even a first round pick is probably a stretch when you saw a guy like Jeremy Grant that just got traded for his first round pick. I think likely his trade value is going to be something similar to either a young player that still has some question marks about how good they can be on their team or just doesn't fit their current roster, kind of like Kobe himself, or an older 
veteran that doesn't fit the timeline of their current team and said team is looking to get younger players in exchange for them. Anyway, I already made a video, a whole video on five trades the Bulls should consider in exchanging for Kobe White. So I'm not going to talk about the trades and the returns that he would get in this one, more so that this recent development of Drogic being promised all these minutes has to mean that Kobe is likely going to be on his way out. Otherwise, he's not going to be getting a ton of playing time. Again, if in fact Drogic was actually promised this by the Bulls front office, which leads me into my last point, is this actually true? Did the Bulls front office in their pitch to Goran Drogic guarantee a role where he would play 20 to 25 minutes off the bench? And why would they do that knowing all the guards that they already have? Younger, more athletic guards who are probably going to be able to contribute more than someone like Drogic at his age. If I'm being honest, I really find it hard to believe and it's for all the reasons that I just mentioned, not being enough minutes to go around, the Bulls would be unwise to prioritize and promise minutes to Drogic over someone like Io and Alex Caruso, especially given their defensive abilities. And you'd have to think that the front office has a little more confidence in Lonzo Ball to still be able to play starter level minutes by the time the season rolls around. Now, maybe they promise Drogic a certain amount of minutes if in fact Lonzo needs to be on a minutes restriction, then fine. But I would hope that if Lonzo is fully available and able to play 35 minutes a game that Drogic isn't going to be seeing 25 minutes on the court. I'm not about prioritizing Drogic over the development of Ayo Sumu or even Kobe for that matter if the Bulls decide to keep him. The whole thing is just very odd to me because even if the Bulls guarantee Drogic minutes and you don't stand by that promise and you're having to give him say 10 minutes per game where he's even putting up DMPs and guys like Io are getting more minutes over him, that doesn't really bode well for his morale, and it also doesn't bode well for the future for other free agents knowing that the Bulls front office likes to make promises that they cannot keep. I don't know, the whole thing is just very odd to me, but I am curious to see how much playing time Drogic will in fact get for the Bulls. I'm also curious to know what you guys think about it. Let me know in the comments, and as always, be sure to subscribe if you're a Bulls fan as I do post daily Bulls content. Thanks again for tuning in, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.